All right, our objective for today, I can define and find the slope of the line. Let's read together. One, two, three. I can define and find the slope of the line. It became rappers right there. Bam. So we're still on linear equations, but today we're going to take a little sidestep in regards to addressing what we call slope. Now, you, some of you have been already introduced to slope in the past, whether it was in fifth, sixth, or seventh grade. But today we're going to go a little bit deeper into it and make sure that uh, we understand how to derive uh, the formula from it, okay? So before we get started, though, I want to make sure I approach it in a different way, just like every concept, I try to approach it so that maybe it makes a little bit more sense, okay? Can you get the light, Simon, please? So writing utensils down, look up to the screen. So, as I mentioned yesterday, yesterday I had a meeting at the high school, uh, and uh, after the meeting, um, I bumped into a parent, and they asked me if I worked there, and I said no. But they said that they had just registered their child at the high school, and they were going to register their other child at Frank Wright, and they were asking for directions, if I can help them out. All right, hold on, give me a second. So, I got my phone out, I showed them a Google map of Imperial, there it is. Everybody see that? All right. So then from there, I I showed them, well, we're here, the high school. And where you need to get to is over here, Frank Wright. He said, okay. So do I go uh, straight? No, I said, just get in your car and just drive through these homes right here. <laughs> and you will get there. <laughs> and no, we don't give those... We don't give those kind of directions. What I did say, what I did say was, I said, um, no, ma'am, get, um, get in your car, and right now they opened up the gates here for the sports people, so you can go all the way through to the back side of the school district. But if you notice here on my phone, these are streets. You got, do you see the streets? Yeah. Yes. So I said, you're going to go from here, you're going to drive, you're going to drive up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven streets up. From there, you're going to make a right turn. You're going to turn and go one, two, three, four streets to the right. What I just gave you, you okay, Connor, over there? What I just gave you, seven and four, those two numbers is what we call the slope. In the past, your teachers might have introduced the slope using the line first, and it got you confused in regards to thinking of a line as a slope. The line is not the slope. That's why I try to make it obvious here that you don't drive through homes. That means this is not the slope. Does that make sense? What is a slope? The directions that we take from one point to another point. So what was the first number that we gave the lady? How many uh, streets? Seven. Seven. And what was the second number? Four. And we usually represent slope as a fraction. So my fraction is what? 7 over 4. And that's how we get our slope. Yes, Jessica. It's locked off already? Yeah. Okay. Well, then she would turn here and then there. Well, you get the idea, right? So once again, question. Is the line the slope? No. What is the slope? The ratio of this to this. And by the way, if this was the coordinate plane, what, 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 what axis does this represent? And what axis does this represent? X. So the ratio of Y to X. That's our slope. Does that make sense? All right. Therefore, so that's as, as easy as I can uh, introduce slope. So on your prayer model, write this down. Slope. What is slope? Slope is a constant rate of change in y value and x value between two points on the line. Can you get the right slide, please? <clears throat> a constant rate of change in y value and x value between two points on a line. Also known as, I don't know if you heard this before, rise over run. Who's heard that before? Rise over run, yeah. That's what we call the slope. Now, if I write rise over run, I'm going to write it over here on the side as a fraction, rise 
overrun. Here it is. And look at my artistic talent right here. Rise. Look at the word rise. It looks like it's rising. You guys see it? Wow. And look at the run. It looks like it's running. Wow. Yeah. Bam. I'm telling you, yeah. Now, if you don't see it, if you don't see it, let me draw here a figure showing that they're rising. Here's a. See the figures rising like that? Yes? And I'm going to draw a stick figure over here with, like, if they're running, there it is. <laughs> well, maybe they have the leg. Okay, let me draw both legs. There it is. There it is. Both legs. <laughs> Anyways, uh, does everybody see that the rise is represented by which variable? And the run represented by the x. All right. So that's how we can get our slope. The difference in y always goes on the numerator, and the difference in x goes in the denominator. Let's see if it worked for our uh, our Google Mac. Look up, please. Let's see. What was this number? The difference in y it goes where? In the numerator. And this one was the difference in x, and it goes where? In the denominator. Did it work? Yes. That's pretty much how we compute our uh, our slope. Okay. So I'm going to give you examples. I'm going to show you different lines with the four different slopes or type of slopes. Okay. Here it goes. This line, the green one, represents a positive slope. The red one represents a negative slope. This one represents undefined, and this one represents zero. Copy that, and I'll explain it right now as to why each one is which, okay? Copy that. Okay, as you're finishing up uh, copying that, I'm going to – let me go over this real quick. So, um, in any graph, when we're graphing, I've been saying that from now on we're going to read graphs or anything that we do in mathematics, we go always from left to right. Is that correct? Remember when we tested the functions also, we tested going from left to right. Okay? Same thing with these. We read these lines from left to right. Before I go there, though, a uh, quick uh, side anecdote or note. Uh, when you guys finish here at Frank Wright, and then all of a sudden you move on to high school, from there you're going to finish your high school, from there you move on to college, some, some of you are going to move out of town. Some of you are going to be applying elsewhere, going outside of uh, Imperial Valley. And let me sketch you already all grown up. Let's see if I'm my artistic talent shows. There it is. Okay, my bad. There it is. Okay, there it is. So there's you. So once you guys leave the valley, uh, you're going to see how you're, there's going to be more technology uh, advancements. And you're going to see L almost everywhere you go, these apparatuses, get this up, that as soon as you approach them like this, you step on a, a step and all of a sudden it takes you up like this. And then, and then, and then, if you go to the other side of uh, wherever you're at, and you step on it like that, it takes you like that. By the way, uh, those are called escalators. Escalators. <laughs> so check this out. If we're if we're reading these lines from left to right, look at this one. When I get on, I get on right here. Where's it going to take me? Up. That's why this is a positive slope. Once again, we're reading it from left to right. I'm going to approach the red one. Where's the first place that I approach it? Right here. That's going to take me where? Down. This is a negative slope. But look at this one. This one we don't know whether to start up here or down here. We just approach it like this. That's why it's called an undefined. Undefined. 
Now check this out. Zero slope. Zero slope, since this is not an escalator, escalators only go what? Up or down. This, they do have some of these on, on airports, and they go like this, you, you, you get on, but that one takes you from side to side. That's why this is what we call a zero slope, because it doesn't either go up or down. This is a zero slope. Does everybody understand? All right, so now check this out. According to the definition, all these slopes are examples of a constant rate of change. Let me show you non-examples. Look at these none examples. Tell your neighbor why. Tell your neighbor why these are not representation of slopes. Copy that, please. So, Fabio, why are these not representation of, of slopes? They don't have a constant rate of change. That is correct. So with that said, come up with a couple of hashtags, give those to your neighbors, so like that they can write them down, please. Uh, Cooper, go. Hashtag constant. Ca hashtag constant. Okay. Another one. Steven. Hashtag straight. Hashtag straight. Okay. Wow. Hashtag sweatshirt. Uh, Isabella. Hashtag. Whoa. That's creative right there. Last one. Connor. Constant change. All right. Uh, also, this is what I want you to do here. I want you to label next to where you wrote slope in parentheses. In parentheses, I want you to write the letter M. Because from now on, whenever you write, whenever I say slope, you're going to write what? M. Because that's going to be our, our, uh, our variable for, for slope. Okay? Are we there so far? Okay. Copy these steps down, please. It's only three steps. Steps. Identify two points on the line or table and write the coordinates. Step two, compute the vertical change over the horizontal change, which means the y change over the x change. Get it? X change. And number three, simplify. Copy that, please. All right, here we go. So three things we're going to do, uh, or three steps to, to uh, find the slope today. We're going to identify two points on the line or table, write the coordinates. We're going to compute the... Uh, the vertical change over the air, a horizontal change, and then from there we're going to simplify. What is our last step? Simplify. Remember that key key step. So check this out on your on your graph paper on the top left. I want you to write example Q. Identify the step. Uh, I'm sorry. Identify the slope of the line that passes through negative four, negative one, and four three. Copy that, please. On the left side of the on the left side of the of the graph paper that you have. So you should have two uh, medium uh, size graphs on your right side, and you have a blank space on the left. Is that correct? So at the top left, I want you to write example Q. Identify the slope of the line that passes through negative 4, negative 1, and 4, 3. So what we're going to do first, which I believe is probably the easiest way of identifying a slope, is by using the coordinate plane. Okay, we're going to plot our points, we're going to graph a line, and then we're going to find our slope. So let's do that first. Let's do it together. So let's plot negative four, negative one. Negative four, negative one is right there. Plot your points, and then four, three. Four, three is four, three, which is right there. Get your index card, and when you sketch your line going through those points, I want you to stretch the uh, the line as far as you can so it can go through the entire coordinate plane, okay? But make sure it goes through your points, and use your index card so it can be as straight as possible. Of 
course. Uh, yes. Be nice. All right. So, what is the first thing we did? We plot our points. What is the second thing? We graphed our line. Okay, so we're ready to find the slope. So, this is the process. Ready? First thing we do is write our formula. M equals rise over run. Then we write it again, but with blanks. M equals blank over blank. Are we there so far? Okay. So let's see. So what we're going to do right now is find out how to get from this point to this point. Now, of course, we told the lady not to drive through the houses. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So that means we're going to go from here which direction? Up. How many steps? One, two, three, four. Label this one four, and that's our right. That goes right there. From there, you're going to make a right turn, and how many steps to the right? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you write that as your run. That goes underneath. Well, we just said we found our slope, but what is our last step? Simplify. Simplify. Can we simplify that fraction? M equals half. M equals one half, and we always leave the slope as a fraction form. Tell your neighbor what I just said. Now, check this out. What did we say the definition was? A constant rate of change, which means the direction of that line never changes and it continues on. So what if I was to tell you to, that we can pick two more points? What if I was to tell you that we're going to get the same slope? Let's find out. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to set a point. Let's see. Let's pick a point uh, way over here. Let's pick, plot this one. 10, 6. On the, on the same graph? On the same one. Yeah, on the same line. Remember I told you to stretch your line all the way through? Okay, so 10, 6 should be on that line. And from over here, let's pick uh, negative 8, negative 3 negative 8, negative 3, and 10, 6. Negative 8, negative 3, 10, 6. I want you to find me the slope between those two points. Don't say it out loud. Keep it to yourself and see what you get. Let's see who can help me with the rise. Xavier. So from here, how many steps up? Nine. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is correct. That goes on our rise. Okay. And what's the run? Justin. Eighteen. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18. Hands if you got that. And what is our last step? Simplify. Simplify. M equals one half. one half. What do we notice? That it's the same slope. And guess what? If I was to ask you to take uh, two other points on that same line, tell you never what slope you're going to get. Tell them why with one or two words, please. Okay, tell them why using only one or two words. Okay, let's see. Ethan, one or two words? Same line, okay. Uh, Valeria, same pattern, okay. Uh, Jessica, constant rate, because it's part of the definition, right? Okay. Everybody got it? Yes? Okay. Let's do one more. You're going to do this one by yourself. On the same 
coordinate plane. I want you to plot these two points. On the same line? No, on the same coordinate plane, not the same line. I want you to plot negative 2, 6 and 2, 3. Negative 2, 6 and 2, 3. Sketch your line and find me the slope between those two points. Be careful with this one. I'm throwing you a quick uh, a curveball. See if you catch it. Negative 2, 6 and 2, 3. Focus, please. Copy that and go. Okay, let's see. Ne negative 2, 6 and 2, 3. Let's see, does your line look something like this? Okay, so the line, we got that. Okay, so here goes the process for the slope. M equals rise over run. Then we write, eh, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Then we write M equals blank over blank. Okay, so let's see. Help me with the rise. Marco, so I start here. Where do I go? I'm sorry? Oh, hold on. Question was, why do we start here? Well, if we're going from left to right, which is the first point? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's clarify this right now. When we read graphs or anything in math, we go always from left to right. So which would be our first point? This one. And we're going to this one. So what do I do, Marco? Down how many? Three. One, two, three. So look at this question. If we go down three, what do I label this? That is correct. Negative three. And that is our right. Negative three. <laughs> then I make a right turn and I go one, two, three, four. Can I simplify at the end? No. Well, my slope is negative three over four. And what do we know? Since it's a constant rate of change and I give you another two points, guess what our slope would be? Negative 3 over 4. We got this, yes? All right. However, pay attention to this part. This is easy because we can plot it and we can count steps, and this is probably the easiest way of finding the slope. However, on the home play, they're going to ask you to find the slope without graphing. So in order to get there, let me go to this next step. Writing utensils down, pay attention, please. Stay focused for this part, please, or you're going to miss it. Here's one point. Here's another point. In mathematics, when they give us two points and we're reading it from left to right, we assume that this one would be our first point. This would be our second. Of course, this one has an x value and a y value. This one also has an x value. And it also has a y value. However, if I were to write both coordinates side by side, we would have x, y, x, y. That would be confusing. So in mathematics, when we see that there's two different points to differentiate, we use the number that was assigned to the point. So this would be x sub 1, y sub 1 which means this is what? x sub 2, y sub 2. Everyone understand so far? All right. So now that we have the labels down, that means this would be x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. OK. However, check this out. We're going to find the slope. Right now, I'm going to use numbers first, because I want us to get to this next part that we need. Here we go. And I'm going to give this a value of 10, and this one is 6. This one is 2, and this one is 8. You're just paying attention. So here we go. Look up to the screen. I need to get from here to here, which means I need the rise. Is that correct? OK, who can give me the rise? Ethan. I'm sorry? What is the rise from here to here? Four. How did he get four, everyone? Ten minus six. Okay, thank you. All right, that is correct. How about the run? Look at the run. I need to get from here to here. Cooper? Six. 
How did he get 6 using these two numbers, everyone? 8 minus 2. That is correct. You guys see that? All right. Now check this out. And of course, if I simplify, I get 2 thirds and so on and so forth. Okay? However, what if I told you, check this out, that I want you to give me the slope but without using numbers? All right. So check this out. Look how we got the look how we got the right. I want you to use these labels only. So it can give me the right. Let's see, you're getting confused with the numbers. Let me erase the numbers. Who can give me the right? Take it out again. This one was 10 minus 6. But without numbers, what would you write here? Jessica, go. Close. Close. Luis. Close. Helena. Y sub 2, okay, Y sub 2. What else, Stephen? Minus Y sub 1, that is correct. Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1. Therefore, who can give me the run? Savior. X sub 2 minus X sub 1, that is correct. This is the formula for slope. Copy that. Formula for slope. Slope formula. Yeah, at the end we simplified, but right now I just wanted to get through the formula. And I'll check this out. How is that going to help us finding the slope between two lines? I mean, between two points without graphing? Well, let me show you. Example mega cube. Let's say I gave you the points 2, 3, and 10, 13. Justin, which one's my first point? Yeah, I, I gave you two points, and if we read from left to right, which is my first point? 2, 3. That means this one we're going to label x sub 1, y sub 1. If that's true, what is this one, everyone? x sub 2, y sub 2. So now check this out. If they ask you to find a slope using these two points and not graphing, well, guess what we're going to use? Guess what we're going to use? The formula. m equals blank minus and minus. So let's see. What is y sub 2 here? 13 minus. What is y sub 1? 3 what is x sub 2? 10. What is x sub 1? 2. Okay, let's see. What is 13 minus 3? That's 10. A, uh, 10 minus 2, that's 8. Can we simplify that? 5 over 4. We need to leave it in a fraction form. This is my slope. You got it? Home play for tonight is on pages 176 through 177. Only do all of them. All right. There is tutoring. If I don't see you, see you guys tomorrow. Bye.